compromise uh, uh, on the whole question of that end of knowledge, you know, which very often is completely ignored. You know, they always think only of the brain part, but not the uh, ass part, as they say. You know, uh, of, 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 of uh, knowledge. It's, um, and another question is, for example, when do you think an Arab Muslim woman can become, say, president of the UN General Assembly. I mean, that's like a... <laughs> 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 so, an Arab Muslim woman being president, I'm not talking about a secretary general, but a president of the UN General Assembly, which is a very you know, formal, very important uh, position. You know? So an Arab Muslim woman becoming president of uh, the UN General Assembly, which looks like the number one position in the way uh, overall. Say, in five years' time, say, 20 years' time, or never? How many say never? 20 years' time? Well, uh, quite a lot. Five years time? Two years time. <laughs> Next year. I'm just giving you a rough, you know, like in the immediate future, in the longer future, or probably never. Well, the good news is that an Arab Muslim woman was president of the UN General Assembly 25, 30 years ago already. Yeah. Which is interesting yeah? that uh, certain kinds of uh, prejudices or images develop that actually disconnect. And this was a very eminent uh, woman from one of the Gulf uh, states. She was a lawyer. She was the uh, president of the International Bar Council. So it's amazing sometimes how we have, uh, uh, you can say, blanks of prejudices in our, our mind. I, I, I chose a topic for today uh, called Mobilizing, sort of mobilizing, but the galactic method. And I use the word galaxy uh, deliberately because uh, when we are dealing with the complexities uh, and complexity, complexities that often have no borders, no borders, uh, your thinking also has to be very different because you are not thinking in a box. You are thinking in terms of changing situations. And that's why uh, I shared with you some words, uh, uh, some of you were around at that time, words like local, yeah? which are a combination of global and local, because separating global from local is one kind of way of thinking. But knowing that these two are always constantly related, that an action that's called global has immediate connectivity with the local and can transform the local uh, together. So new kinds of ways of uh, transcendental uh, kind of thinking or transcending thinking and I talked about transcendence. Uh, another word would be chaotic yeah? because sometimes people talk of chaos and sometimes they talk of order but they, the, the concept that very often uh, chaos is also a certain kind of order yeah? and that's a certain kind of system and there's a certain kind of growing and it, it has actually uh, it's actually it's a system yeah? in, uh, in, uh, in, in the place. So, uh, concepts very often, uh, uh, or words, become quite uh, 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 bad when they are limited. Uh, like our last speaker, of course, uh, is a mathematician. The whole concept of zero, yeah? just the word zero, yeah? and that is such a historical concept. Right? And even somebody has written a book, Zero, the birth of a dangerous idea. Yeah. That's the title of the book, yeah? the zero, the birth, because the word z the, the, the symbol zero transformed mathematics and uh, not only transformed mathematics and now of course it's the basis of uh, one zero one zero is the basic of computers uh, at the moment so uh, we often say that Bill Gates should give uh, half his money to India uh, because generally it's acknowledged that uh, the zero came from India and uh, just as Bill Gates uses intellectual property rights uh, against uh, you know, everybody uh, that maybe a group in India should sue 
uh, Bill Gates and as a starting point in saying that please pay us an amount for every time you, uh, you use a zero in your uh, computer you know, and that will be payment. And I'm thinking of this because these are in a way, revolutionary ways by which you can begin to uh, do changes in, uh, in society. Uh, I, the maths about the whole history of the human rights movement was fascinating because we, we took the journey and we took the spread and then we also looked at the future. For us, uh, one tradition that is always very useful is uh, to learn from acupuncture kind of traditional medicine. First, you have to have that map, because if you don't have a map and you don't see all the things, it's very difficult for you to do your particular work in any kind of context, because you don't see the big, big uh, picture. Uh, and you don't see the big picture, you also de don't see the compass. Yeah? You don't see where exactly things are and so on. And any person who's involved in any socialized, social movements uh, always has to do that kind of thing uh, as part of their process. And the the map is not enough. You have to know in acupuncture the points. Where are the things that are actually significant in that map that make it work, that when it doesn't function, you have to begin to change. Yeah? Uh, and you have to do the piercing. Yeah? Uh, now there's needles and now they even have electrical impulses. Then if you understand the map and you know where the points are, you have to have people who know how to do that work, huh? how to trigger that particular point and use it. So you need this map, you need to know uh, exactly what the pressure points are and you need to have people who know how exactly to use these pressure points. So if you are involved in popular mobilization, in social mobilization, there are a number of things that are quite useful in terms of uh, uh, frameworks that you can, uh, you can use. And I have put uh, five of them uh, up there, and I put them in the form of simple symbols, uh, so that you can uh, maybe reflect on them. I have put first uh, a flower, and I use the flower as a symbol of all the thinking that we have to do, the holistic thinking in terms of we have to do about missions, about mission uh, 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 one of the things we really overall are looking for. And one generic, one generic uh, uh, kind of framework, uh, very often like in Sanskrit we talk about the Panchasila, the five uh, principles, the five principles. There are five kinds of domains uh, and, and of course you can play with them. One is social justice. Yeah. One type of flower is uh, social justice. Yeah. Another petal of the flower is ecological sustainability. Another petal of the flower is political participation. Another petal of the flower is economic productivity. And a fifth petal is cultural vibrancy. So the social, political, economic, ecological, and uh, uh, what is the other one? The, the political. Yeah? All those five domains are the kind of broad domains. I mean, you can think of, play around, but basically these five things are, are there. So any issue that you are dealing with uh, when you are involved in social transformation, thing, this kind of context is quite useful because every single issue you find has also bearings on the other issues. In, uh, in that. So even when you talk about uh, uh, human rights, <coughs> it's human rights that can cover all the five uh, uh, domains. So that's the flower. The second is a very simple thing, the star. And this is a symbol for looking to see how you can make changes. And there are two or five kind of tools, five kinds of platforms are very useful. And I'm taking again the broad sweep of history one. And this is the most important one. This is the power of one. The power of one. And if you look at history, great changes are done very often by the work of one person who has initiated and triggered as a catalyst, incubator, and, and things start beginning to move. And it is amazing, whether it's at the local level, or it's at the regional level, or the state level, or the global level, 
people have made those kinds of changes and amazing changes just to use uh, for example even in, a, in social movements the first civil society effort uh, uh, in the 80s just to stop all corporations transnational corporations to uh, advertise infant formula in the world yeah, completely yeah. people thought it was an impossible thing but a campaign was organized so you know no advertising allowed of that particular thing no free samples to be given no pictures of babies on those products so a kind of really international uh, uh, campaign but it began with one individual uh, a young doctor saying milk and murder uh, and, and, and talking about the fact that he was a pediatrician he became later the first director of the uh, maternal and child health uh, of the World Health Organization she worked a lot in Africa her name was Cicely Williams but she had the courage as a young pediatrician to go to a public meeting and say you are committing murder in terms of the way of selling this particular, particular product and that was in the 1930s and the campaign began and so every time when you have movements this power of one is there and of course every single person can start beginning and doing the things that they believe in on their own and if each person just does that you find 100 people are doing it a thousand people are doing it a million people are doing it and the change occurs it can be for both good things and bad things but the power of one is a very significant uh, one and sometimes underestimated the second power is the power of many because the world is organized in such a way we also have to organize it move from the individual to institutions and networks that are required to make change so how do we also organize cooperative arrangements and, and uh, the idea of uh, uh, social organizations and movements uh, and of all kinds of varieties uh, nowadays you have uh, uh, the UN call them non-governmental organizations it's a term that many of us did not like because it also became uh, down to the national level and uh, always you are the non-governmental organization so number of us in the 70s got a bit tired of this and we started saying well uh, we are having discussions with the NPOs uh, you're having discussions with the NPOs always say the non-people's organizations you know? <laughs> just uh, as a way uh, of showing how if you identify somebody by what they are not then maybe those people also should identify the others uh, uh, the other way you know it's just like one very famous native uh, American uh, professor his name was Ward uh, Merchant uh, Ward Churchill and he came I can't remember which particular Sioux tribe or one of the other tribes uh, in, in, in near Colorado he said um, we always are having black studies Negro studies uh, I think I'm going to start a department of white studies yeah? mm -hmm as a way of challenging uh, the, the system of but this idea of many you know of connecting and uh, and uh, forming organizations uh, civil we use the term civil society organizations now uh, uh, we can talk about popular movements and the whole terminology and if you just look at study of uh, global civil society you find many uh, uh, different kinds of theories uh, and systems of organizing are very very complex and it is as complex as biodiversity the, 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 the connectivity so there's no kind of standard system of cooperation uh, there are many many models from very live action on uh, oriented forces like one of the biggest civil society movements that time around breastfeeding was not even registered but it had thousands of members you know, millions of people who were supporting the campaign but the structure was a network yeah? and you had a simple charter people signed on to the network and you became part of it based on on that and different groups uh, began uh, to work on uh, what was needed to be worked and there were structures for consultation and so on but it didn't have to and this created a big problem for the multinational corporations we usually like to look for a headquarters so they can bomb the headquarters and destroy the organization but here I'm sorry they couldn't do it because say, where's your headquarters? it's everywhere huh? the headquarters is at the periphery which also is a different 
kind of concept where you have participatory organizations that work. So you have many kinds of structures also of working in the power of the many. The third is the power of, I call it the power of the halo, you know, or international instruments. And we went through, for example, like human rights. All these instruments that are there are huge resources from which you can frame your work. You know, I am working on this particular issue because, do you know, you have signed this particular convention and your country was there, but you're not respecting it locally. All these instruments are not there. But if people become more and more aware, you can draw. And not only for these halos, but also in terms of other kinds of universal value documents, yeah? not only the legal convention one, the spiritual values that can take, and for example, the one single one, single one uh, uh, is one that I've shared with many of you, the golden rule. Treat others like you like to be treated. Don't treat others like you don't want to be treated. That's in all religions and there's a remarkable global effort by Karen Armstrong called the Charter of Compassion. And it's, we just Google that, they have institute, they have campaigns all over the world. And that's the kind of you as well too, because sometimes you say, you want somebody to think, just throw this at them and say, is this how you would like to be? They say, no, that's bad, right? Okay, that's bad. We agree that that's bad huh? in the place. Uh, so, using these universal values and international instruments is uh, uh, a very important one, and we don't do enough of that. Uh, I shared with you all the total list of days for action, weeks for action, months for action, decades of action of the UN system. Now, these things are not just formal things. They said, ah, these are just ceremonies. Every one of them has been the result of civil society movements working with like-minded people who had campaigns and campaigns, and this become, became the culminating symbol of the success of a particular issue and a way of remembering. Yeah? Because in social movements, uh, in every kind of things, this principle of don't forget to remember or remember not to forget because otherwise it's so easy for things to go back again but you have this point then every year we remember we remember we remember we remember the struggle we remember the success and we discuss whether we should even move forward so i've given you the whole list and one of the things the college does is hey these are things that we fought for and got and just like we celebrate Mother's Day or it's our birthday, let's make sure that all of us look at those days and decades and so on as our, our ownership and our story and, and make them into real life programs all over the world. So you can use those instruments, those days, those universal values. The fourth one is information now. Because there was a time when you can hide the information. But now, a click and you can get it. But there's also another kind of challenge. Because now, there's so much information, what information do you get when you click? And the big challenge is now making sure there's some kind of selection. It's like a supermarket you go to and suddenly you find 35 kinds of soap. At one time, we didn't have to worry. It's like every village, or every small town had their own soap factory yeah, and everybody made their own soap and we, we did a very interesting study about 40 years ago about the soap industry how thousands and thousands of soap factories suddenly got destroyed because a whole new transnational empire of lovely soap in colors with a bit of perfume took over and destroyed uh, globally the local soap industry by and large yeah, it was very very interesting uh, a story of, uh, of, uh, of a very simple thing about cleansing yeah, that, uh, that transform it. So the soap story uh, is something that can be researched and told maybe we should have International Soap Day and start talking about local soaps again uh, and how they should be necessary. So this question of information is very important now uh, both in terms of uh, uh, not only the internet but also in terms of uh, new systems all over the world because uh, particularly with UNESCO, you had this whole concern many, many decades ago about the way the information order of the world was operating. Those who control what you see, what you hear, and when you hear it, 
And when you don't hear it, they have systems of... of and it was a, such a huge issue that UNESCO had a commission, the McBride Commission, and uh, it uh, helped to bring up these kinds of issues. But what happened? Countries, particularly those that were dominant in the area of media control, disliked this idea because they said this is a, a new system of controlling information. As long as they were in charge and they ran it, because sometimes people like the freedom because it gives them the freedom to control the system. And they are always interested in freedom as long as they can control it. But they are not interested in freedom if they are going to be regulated because then they feel they may lose the power and the authority and, and the whole story of big media is but when uh, UNESCO took that particular decision, three governments resigned and uh, United States, UK and Singapore. It's a very interesting uh, uh, model. And this is about trying to have a new international information order. The head of this commission was an Irish uh, person, the McBride Commission, but very interesting. This battle is continuing now too. And you have to be always conscious of the way in which international uh, media corporations, television stations and uh, uh, newspapers and portals that are doing it. So you have to make sure that we have as good and as strong uh, systems that link people up to the information that is countervailing very often, that also gives the, not just a balanced picture, but very often the balancing picture, yeah, which is a, a different concept, uh, the a balancing, because sometimes those people take the extreme and you have to actually sometimes go, as Ho Chi Minh once said, uh, you have to be like the bank, that pushes, 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 when they stop, we'll come back even faster, yeah, and take uh, uh, further. So, information systems are going to be important, and there's going to be all kinds of struggles. The last one is the one also that very often is completely ignored, and that's the power of success. That everywhere, when people say, hey, it's not possible to do, actually there are success stories all over the world. And these stories are not told and retold and played out and celebrated, uh, respected. So, for example, at the Right Livelihood Award, it's one way of remembering these success stories. So we have nearly 150 laureates, and their stories now become inspiration, become uh, stories of uh, books and stories of films and stories for models that people can, uh, can use, people who can come and help you, give you energy and give you strength. So, the power of success is again an extremely important one in uh, global socialization movement. Then I put here a kind of many things, simple things like I, I talked about the three generations that, that movements have to always think because if you're going to be a movement then there has to be a three generational thing. Ibn Khaldun, you can say the father of modern sociology, uh, amazing Islamic uh, intellectual scholar, he studied civilization and he said you know many civilizations they die in the third generation, this is the third generation syndrome because the first generation fought, they were there. The second generation was alive and they were there. They were able to do it. But the third one needs to be prepared. Yeah? Needs to be consciously prepared. And if you don't do that, that usually is the end of that particular. And then it's, it refers to also family businesses and so on. And so that particular concept. So the three generational ones, every social mobilization movement must make sure they draw from the wisdom of the older generations and their networks and so on, at the same time always build and make the third, the young generation part of their system. Uh, and I, I had a, a very important philosophy of one third of my time, all these last 40 years, must always be also spent for young people. Uh, then you have a movement that has got life and a whole new generation coming up. I talked about spaces, federal, I mean global, national and local. We talk about uh, rights, maybe, it's just not rights, it's responsibilities, and a very important element called relationships. You find that if you are going to have a quarrel, if it's people who know each other, you can actually have debate in a different kind of level. You can even sometimes say naughty things about each other, but because you have a relationship, the discussion will be quite different. But if you don't have even a relationship, then it's difficult. That's why. Uh, movements like this where we bring people from all over, you become an alumni or a network, you begin to respect diversity, you can have discussion, you can draw on many kind of uh, wonderful, wonderful things. So the rights, the responsibilities and the relationships are the three R's as important as reducing, recycling and uh, reusing the, the, the kind of uh, 
uh, environmental uh, uh, environmental work. And I talked also about the, the head, heart, and hand. Uh, and I've mentioned that several times uh, already, that uh, it's just not the PhDs that we want in the movement. We want the link with the PSDs, the blood, sweat, and tears people, people who have got passion. And we want the link with the hand people, uh, the GTDs, getting things done people, because we want to get yourself involved in social movements. And you have to have the brain, the head, you have to have the hand, the ability to do things, and you have to have the passion, the heart uh, for that. So if you have that kind of uh, uh, cycle, then you will uh, move. And lastly, lastly, I have a Sufi symbol there. And this Sufi symbol is a straight line and another line. So in life, in social movements and organizing, both having a clear path, and a clear direction, but also the ability for yourself to navigate, to you know, look at ways of issue, to be able sometimes even to move back, to change directions and to have the flexibility uh, is very important because very often in social movements also, they can be totally destroyed because cleverness and hardness is just sometimes not standing. Yeah? For example, they have found the most best bicycle in the world is now a bicycle made of bamboo because bamboo has is strong, but it has the flexibility. So when you hit a bamboo, it absorbs wallops. Yeah? It absorbs it. But if it's something hard and you hit it, it breaks. Yeah. So sometimes that, that softness and that ability, uh, tensile ability, is of a different kind. And, and in social movements, you have these kinds of uh, uh, ideas. And, and you have to have both this strong will and very clear direction, but also the ability in your movement uh, to understand sometimes we have a, 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 to work in different kinds of ways. Sometimes we cry, for example. We have a quarrel among our own movement. It splits up and there are three. There are various ways you can begin to look. That three could equally actually multiply the energy within the movement too. If we respect that sometimes it is necessary. We had three founders of a movement and the three founders at a certain stage each has different ways of wanting to move forward. Sometimes there is time. Each one creates the one area in which they are very good at. But we learn that this is a strength, could be a strength. So instead of spending their time in their split, killing each other, which is exactly what the enemy would like to say, okay, we have differences to you. You start, you start, we work out, and we move on. And so respecting uh, this kind of uh, chaotic kind of organizing, because sometimes we have to split, we have to, uh, it is. And taking then these sort of five uh, ideas, uh, very generic kinds of things that are very important for uh, social movements, uh, you can look and see and hopefully understand not only what is happening in the world, but also how people are engaging in very difficult kinds of ways, but those who are able to think in this galactic way that Civil society is just not about organizations, about individuals, about in, in the uh, institutions, it's about inspiration, so it's about uh, information, it's about initiatives and taking action. So, I leave this with you and I want after that hopefully to have an exchange on uh, some of these ideas uh, of global organizing uh, that uh, hopefully will be useful to you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Anwar, also for including this uh, GTD uh, aspect, the getting things done aspect uh, in your speech, and I mean with your own more than 40 years experience of in, in different social movements on different levels. 50. 50, 50 years. Oh. Oh, 50 right. years. <laughs> that was when, this is the 50th anniversary when I was elected president of the students movement of Malaysia. Okay. So we start in the student movement, so you can see, uh, also as students, you know, you don't have to wait until you finish your PhD. Yeah, we can uh, start as soon as by, by, by the way, this, this getting things done aspect is also important to receive the PhD and to yeah. get it uh, written up. So don't forget this. Uh, however, thank you very much. And so... Um, we are open for questions. Yes, yes please. Well, um, my name is Wissam Ahmed from Palestine. Um, 
thank you for your interesting presentation and talk today. Um, for the example, for the example of the flower, uh, the five dimensions. You talk about the five dimensions, but what is the core of the flower? You see, it's the circle and the core. Yeah. So, what could be the core of this flower? The flower is usually the core. Yeah, it's, but it's the connectivity. The five yeah, it's the what could be the core for yeah. these um, five. dimensions? It's the connectivity. That yeah. All these five are interrelated, and two, the core is also where the pollen and the seed is. And that's going to be the system for regeneration, for growing, for moving. And that's why the symbol for, for the kind of visioning has to be a dynamic symbol, not a static uh, symbol. It's, it's a, a flower grows. It, it's not only beautiful, but it also carries the seeds for the future. And that part of flowers is forgotten, uh, that it actually embodies, embodies that. But, but, but that's into symbols, yeah? But yeah. From, from the same seed, we can have different flowers. You know, so yes, you can you can have many kinds of flowers, yeah? but uh, the same, the same dimensions and the same flowers. No, well, this is just a symbol. Huh? You can have, <laughs> you design it uh, there. You can begin. So when to I go. think of my movement, then yeah. I have to yeah. think about you can think of different You can think of seven yeah. patterns. Maybe you think so. But the idea is to always remember that uh, these different domains are connected, huh? and that they have a center, and there is a core kind of value, and the core value requires that kind of holistic vision, and very often. Social movements can end up like ministries of government becoming silos, you know, and they are so dominant only in their own particular area. So the human rights movement talks about human rights, but you know, the, the movement that is from the environment will say, hey, 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 you know, all this. So when you have this whole picture, you can actually make your movement stronger by bringing together and linking up and understanding that for social change and transformational change, you may have to work with. Partners. You have the immediate people with immediate interest, but you have the larger circle. And Gandhi had a very important symbol one time. He said, if people draw a circle around you, around themselves, to exclude you, you draw a bigger circle to include them in yours. Yeah? And, and that was a kind of dynamic uh, symbol that he had of growth. Because huh? people are like that, they said, hey, I've nothing to do with you. And I said, never mind, I'm going to do a movement where which is bigger, includes him, and that person says, hey, I like to be part of that bigger thing, yeah? Uh, so, uh, that kind of concept, huh? so, uh, basically it's to do that holistic inter interlooking, the beauty of looking at things in a whole, and the fact that the birth and the, everything is also necessary if you want the rejuvenation of that. And you can add patterns there, people will have more patterns. And, you know. and not to be forgotten, flowers are beautiful in order to attract attention. Attention also, yes. So, uh, going by your presentation, uh, Heights, the recognition to towards global events and all that, and the movement towards global events. Um, what the right livelihood? What what connection really can you have or do you have with major global events? I, I ask this because, take for example. Um, Today is a major global event. Uh, I think the World Environment Day or so is marked globally, and this is very key uh, for a day like this. And I haven't heard much about that. The focus is not really addressed, and also, practically, I mean, not much of that is linked to what we're talking about. I really want to see the connection. I wanted to just find out whether you are connected to some of these global events. We take the Right Life Youth College. We have seven core activities that we are promoting. We are, we are just a thousand days old. So it's a young uh, kid. And the seven, one of them includes the whole question of the days of action. And the days of action idea is that, hey, this represents a huge, like a, 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 a seed, uh, you know, a, uh, 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 not a museum, but a, 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 a place of amazing fruits. So we ask universities to start looking more systematically at this. So just as we have different kinds of science uh, in university, we are looking for a university that will actually take all those things and that every one of those days lights up the campus uh, during a time and the students' movement takes and uses these particular days on a very systematic uh, basis and you have discussions and for example, we have started in, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we have made the Day of Peace an activity which a lot of groups uh, uh, do now. It's become a, quite a huge festival 
we had uh, International Volunteers Day where we want to encourage the idea of service and we had uh, uh, exhibition of all the civil society groups in the university and 500 students volunteered to work for different civil society groups uh, and the whole concept of uh, the World Volunteer Day, the World Volunteer Movement, suddenly they find websites, they learn how to become a volunteer, how to organize a movement, an amazing amount of resources. So for each of the day becomes our time for telling people, hey, in this movement, World Breastfeeding Week, there's things that you can do, you can read up and, and, and so using this in a very, very systematic uh, way. Because these are the culminating points of our social movement struggles. So there's World Human Rights Day or, you know, World Holocaust Day or, you know, Native Peoples, Indigenous Peoples Day now, you know, and they are very powerful and we are not sufficiently using that. And we think it's a very important platform and we think that universities, if you are talking about universities, then these universalities of the fact that these days are all you know, as a result of the struggle, should become practically in every book and uh, you may find interesting that the University of Science Malaysia we are the diary the official diary of the university includes all these days in the diary so when people are looking at their university diary this is there world environment day well this because they want to make this as part of the conscious uh, consciousness so it's possible it's being done and we need more and more because nowadays again the environment group is only interested in the environment day. So there's fact of the But a comprehensive approach to systematic degree. That's why we have this little sheet that you can pick up where all these things uh, are there. Okay, thank you. Um, Josh, I take it once more. Um, actually, this is a very powerful framework for me. I think I really like it. Uh, what I miss now is, um, how do you call it? What I didn't, I didn't get the... Um, how do you, how do you refer to it? The galactic organizing. Galactic organizing. Instead of global, global organizing. Because the idea also that uh, when we talk about the Earth, we talk about a limited uh, area. But when you move into the galaxy, you're talking of different kinds of things. You're talking about planets, you're talking about, you know, different kinds of uh, systems in the place. For example, we tell uh, social movements, why do we use the word uh, galaxy also? We say, you know, the moon plays such an important role. It's considered a dead planet. A dead planet. But this dead planet lights up the night because of reflection. It has a magnetic pull and it influences our tides. It, it becomes a powerful symbol for measuring our months and uh, uh, those kinds of things. So when you talk about galactic organizing, even dead things can play very important roles. So like the ideas of remembering, or uh, we always say, hey, today is Martin Luther's King's birthday. So if we celebrate those kinds of things, that becomes again a very big social movement because people who are passed on become symbols, but only become symbols if you have a system of remembering them. And that remembering of that particular person becomes the spark uh, for that whole campaign uh, in that. And every year that means Martin Luther King is remembered and, and, and this can be universal huh? we, we, but people don't realize that it's part of a really good galactic organizing uh, system you will look at all these kinds of uh, opportunities. There's of course those 198 uh, tactics but that's uh, non-violent tactics of actually tools that you use but if you don't have a big framework then you don't know what appropriate tool to use under what system and one context because in some cultures Going to the streets is not something that's respected. You can better go and uh, maybe have discussions with the wife of the president, and the wife of the president may give the president a slap and say, "You know, you stupid man. You know, how can you do this for this work?" You know, and, and things have happened like that. That the, the influence that you can make very often has to be in different kinds of channels and different kinds of uh, cultures. So, but you have to be astute. Okay. So, uh, who is next? I think it was you. Okay. Uh, taking all, all of your ideas to a uh, specific situation, uh, what would you do in order to change the structure in the United Nations and change that uh, permanent council members and make that everyone has the same right? 
this has been, uh, of course, discussed. I mean, you can look at the whole history of the United Nations. But there's one project that I would like all of you to connect with. And that project is called the Intellectual History of the United Nations. It's a wonderful uh, story, and uh, remarkable people are involved in that particular project. And it debates all these kinds of issues and the challenges. And that journey is an important journey because the journey of the way the UN system operates and so on is always constantly going to be a work in progress. It's going to be constantly a tension. And sometimes dramatic changes are made. They may be the acquired dramatic events. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. But you have to be conscious of the dynamics. And sometimes the moment might come when these things do happen. I mean, who thought about uh, Paris or whatever it is, you know? I mean, there are various kinds of quite major transformational changes out there. I think they are possible, but they're only possible if we always continue to remember the debate, we always continue that these things are wrong, and we have to have people who are saying, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, yeah? and then you begin. So that's one way to make sure that you are fully aware of the system, fully aware of the debates, fully aware in discussions in universities, because the whole idea of the intellectual history of the United Nations, how much is it discussed in many universities, it should be a subject when we have uh, the United Nations Day. What did we do on that day? That day we can have a look at uh, the critic. And, and sometimes these things will take time, but that time is never known. There is a, sometimes a tipping point for big transformational changes. The second thing for changing with the, the, the UN is the fact that it starts off with we the peoples. Okay? So even if you talk of major conferences that you are, what are they the result of? They have the result of years of campaigning by civil society organizations to because influencing the governments and through their governments. Uh, so you can have also your own systems that constantly show this. And, uh, and it's just like the, the, the tribunals, uh, the International Court of Justice. The more now there are people's tribunals, the more these come up, the more people will suddenly begin to feel, hey, the double standards are so clear and so obvious. But you remind people constantly about those double standards. And if that becomes co in the conscious of many, you will find that sometimes Leadership may emerge, and moments may emerge in history where suddenly there's empathy between leadership, and there's a moment where people feel so comfortable. It's like they talked about the peace dividend. Suddenly they said, "Ah, wonderful! The Cold War is over. You know, we can make transformational changes now. Everybody's happy. Every country is uh, amazing." But they found, of course, it was quite difficult. I mean, UN summits are like you know a meeting between. Uh, a cow and a lion and a tiger and an elephant and a snake and a sheep all sitting together in the mountain trying to have group sex. Trying to have group sex, you know? I mean, you know, it's, they're quite diverse groups and they're trying to create and produce sometimes some things that are supposed to affect everyone. No, it's not easy, yeah? because of that particular diversity. But if you have these other social movements constantly operating, constantly necessary, then you will find you can also influence it, and there will be moments huh, where uh, the changes. We have talked the history of the human rights movement, and the changes that have been made have been made. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But the bad ones, we cannot say, well, let's finish our battle. Our battle now is to expose all the double standards, <laughs> expose all the things. That's why I mentioned China says it wants to fight, but how, how often do we talk about human rights in the United States? The United States State Department has the human rights in all the other countries. So China decided they'll do one on the United States. And they announce it huh? also, and they do it, and it's very interesting reading. You look at prison population in the United States, among the highest in the world. I mean, they, they, they look at very interesting dimensions. Time's, time's up, nearly. Thank you very much again for these two uh, keynote speeches uh, by uh, Dr. Möller from the German Commission for UNESCO and Professor Amla Fasal. Uh, thank you very much for the participants. So we will meet again at 2 o'clock here in this room. The room will be locked, so either you can leave your things in or take them out. Um, and this afternoon the next speech uh, will be given by uh, Dr. Alam Ziai uh, from the Center for Development Research. And it's uh, about uh, breaking up the consensus reflections on development. So I highly encourage you to have this interesting and highly relevant discussion. Thank you very much. See you later. An effort again of one person, uh, a doctor, who said, I want to do something for civil society. He has not now set up the world's best portal on everything that civil society is concerned with in terms of issues. And it's called 
Better World Links, B E T T E R W O L D L I N K S dot org. It's based, uh, started by somebody in Germany. Just one man working as a volunteer. There are 80,000 civil society organizations listed in it with the areas in which they are working. And all the issues they think of, the instruments that are important, the documents. I mean, just the, uh, if you are saying, I'm going to start working for civil society, it's a beautiful library to begin to explore and take a journey on. And so I'd like to give that as a gift to you for continuing this particular work. Thank you so much again. Thank you.